this. A fable is a short story with a lesson. So today we have a fable called The Crow and the Pitcher. Does anybody know what a pitcher is? Grayson. Yes, it is a large vessel that holds water or soda or whatever liquid and then you pour it into a cup. So our fable, the crow in the pitcher, I am going to read it and you need to pay attention and follow along. Bless you. A crow dying of thirst came upon a pitcher that had once been full of water. When the crow put his beak into the mouth of the pitcher, he found the, that only very little water was left in it, and he could not reach far enough to get at it. He tried and he tried, but at last had to give up in despair. What does despair mean? What is despair? He had to give up in despair. Jonathan. Not tired. Despair. So if you're trying to do something and you can't get it and you're dying of thirst and you find a little water but you can't get at it, how would you feel? James. Yes, like, oh my goodness, I can't get it. Despair is very strong feelings of disappointment, sadness, regret. So despair is not a positive emotion, which is understandable in the crow's situation. Then a thought came to him. He took a pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. And then he took another and dropped it into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped it in the pitcher. <laughs> and then he took another pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. At last, he saw the water rising toward him. And after casting a few more pebbles into the pitcher, he was able to drink and save his life. Yeah, very smart. So what exactly was happening, friends? Why, if you can envision, what was happening is he dropped the pebbles into the water. Why, why was that beneficial? What was happening? Ella. Um, there was more stuff in it, so the water would rise higher. So the mass, the rocks were creating mass. The mass was making the water rise. And then the pitcher, or the crow, could get the water. Probably not a lot, but enough to save his life. So it's an interesting thing. He was very, very defeated. Despair is on the verge of giving up. But let's keep in mind, he is dying of thirst. So if you are dying of thirst, you might fight a little harder to come up with a solution. And that is exactly what our crow did. So. What would have happened if the crow gave up? What probably would have happened to the crow? Owen. Yep. Very similar to the ant who fell in the water. If the dove did not help the ant, what would have happened to the ant? Ella. He would have drowned. So similar. So what would have happened if crow got really, really frustrated and broke the pitcher. Oh. Took his beak and pecked at it and broke it. What would have happened? Would it have been a good ending? <laughs> Olivia. Uh, the um, water would have soaked into the ground. Yes. And he would not have been able to get the water. What if he stopped gave up and said, you know what, I'm going to wait for it to rain. Keep in mind, friends, 
The very opening sentence is, a crow is dying of thirst. What would have happened if he waited for it to rain? Did he know it was going to rain the next minute? No. Could have rained next, the next day, maybe the next week, maybe the next month. Maybe it wouldn't have rained for quite some time. What would have happened to that crow? Jeremiah. Die. Yes. So the crow was in a very precarious place, meaning he was in a dangerous situation. But he used wisdom. What wisdom did he use? What did he do to save his own life? He didn't have somebody like the dove saving his life. He thought on his own of something to do. What did he start doing? Jack. Crossing pebbles in the um, picture. Yes. So what was the overall effect of that? The fact that he, we talked about he dropped pebbles in, and as the pebbles kept going into the pitcher, one after the other after the other, he could see that the water was? Because the main problem, friends, was what? He saw the water in the pitcher, but he couldn't what? Emmy, reach it. So how horrible would that be if you're dying of thirst, there's a pitcher with some water in it, but you can't. It'd be like our hands are tied behind our backs and we can't lift it up to drink it. I don't know what to do. What would you do? Um, I would just like, uh, either like grab pebbles with my mouth, with my teeth and put them in there, or just like, or, or I just like pick them over on my side and then well, that's, so that is a good point. So if you tipped it over, what would be different between that and the crow breaking the pitcher? What would happen to the water if you tipped it over? Is that mm -hmm. Yes, and then it would, like Olivia said, it would seep in the ground and then you'd have no water. So you have to be really, that's cause and effect. So let's talk about that. So what, what is the very first thing the crow did? He's dying of thirst. He came upon a pitcher. What is the very first thing that he did? We are going to sequence this, this, so I need you to look at the story, focus on the events that occurred. What is the very first thing the crow did? Helen. No, that is not the first thing that he did. You need to read carefully. A crow dying of thirst came upon a pitcher that had once been full of water. What did he do? What is the very first thing that he did, Grayson? He put his beak in the pitcher. He put his beak in the pitcher, but he found that only very little water was left in it. So he couldn't reach it. So, what did he do next? Read it, be very careful. So he put his beak, what did he do next? Luke, you need to read the paper so you can, read, so you can answer the questions. Make sure you read it carefully. So he comes upon the picture he tries to reach the water. Then what if he can't reach it? What does he do again? What does he do next, boy? Nope. Nope. Christian. Tries it again? Yes. Good. You have to read. When we're sequencing, you have to get every detail in order. So first thing he does is he gets to the picture. He tries to reach it. He can't. And then it says what, Christian? Um, then he... He tried. He, he tried and tried, but at, but at last he gave up and disappeared. Despair. Despair. All right, so he tried and he tried harder, could not get it. He's very, very like, oh my goodness, I have got to have water. I'm dying here. What does he do next? So we end up, he's in despair. Then what did he do? 
Did he give up? What does it say that he did? I need everyone besides the same, I don't need the same people raising their hand over and over again. I need everyone to participate. When Sheen, what did he do? What is the next series of events that he did? Yes. As he's sitting there looking at the water in despair, thinking, I am going to die if I don't get this water, he, instead of giving up, he started thinking, using his brain. What did he do next? Jonathan. Yes. Did he put just one pebble in the pitcher? No, he dropped a lot of pebbles in the pitcher because why do you think he kept dropping these pebbles in the pitcher? What occurred to this crow? What was he seeing with his eyes? Jack. Um, the water was rising. The water was rising, and do you think his despair turned into a little bit of hope? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So pebble after pebble after pebble, he put the rocks in the pitcher, the water started rising, and then what? Olivia. Um, he got, the water was high enough where he could reach it. Yes. And then he drank, and he saved his life. So a very good story. Now we've had two stories about cause and effect. With our first one with the ant and the dove, the dove saved the ant's life by giving, giving a leaf into the water so he could get out. And then the ant turned around and did what? Gabe. Save the dove. So now in this case, the crow, did he have help? No. Well, the pebbles. Yeah. The pebbles helped him, but the crow had to think on his own to save his own life. So we see an interesting cause and effect. Very smart on the crow's part to think about putting the pebbles in the pitcher. So, So what was the overall effect of the pebbles? What did the pebbles do? The throwing of the rocks in the pitcher. What was the overall effect of that event? Jack. Um, to make the water rise so we can get it. And it, eventually it did what? What was the ultimate effect of that act? Olivia. Um, yes. So when you are reading stories like this, there is a very specific order. The first thing we see with both of our fables, oh my goodness, something bad is happening. The ant is drowning, the crow is dying of thirst. What is going to happen? And then as we read, a series of events occur. So with these short stories, they're very short aren't they? There's not a lot to them. But do they have a lot of events or a lot of sequencing? Do they have a lot of things happening within this small little story? Yes. Which is very interesting. That is what fables are. They're not long stories. Some are longer. Like the next one we're going to read is a really, I like it. It's called De uh, Delius and Icarus Tries to Fly. Have you ever heard of that? No. Yeah. It's a longer story, so there's going to be more sequencing involved, but it's an interesting story. Now, would you say that this story has a overall lesson to it? What would you say? Now, we read with the ant. What was the what was the moral of the story? Because fables have a moral. So the ant and the dove, one good turn or one good act deserves another. What would you say the moral of the crow in the picture is? The moral of the story. Everybody focus, everybody track. What is the moral of the story that we just read? I need some 
people guessing, you don't have the right answer, that is fine, but I need conversation. Luke, what would you say is the overall moral of the crow and the pitcher? Very good. That is a good one. The crow So when you say he had faith, what would be another word we could use? Because he was dis in despair, correct? He's dying, sees water, cannot reach it. Despair, remember, is a very powerful emotion of sadness, anger, frustration. What am I going to do? I'm starting to freak out. So the crow had faith. With that faith, what did he not do? What did he not do? What is this a lesson of? Wenxin. Yes. Very good. The crow did not. The crow did not give up. because he had faith, something in him had faith that he could get this done if he would just think and not freak out. Because it would be really easy at that moment in time to just freak out. I'm dying, I can't get to this water, that could save my life. Olivia. Um, think before you act. Think before you act, very good. So in this term, in this story, how would you define that? Right. Instead of freaking out, he had faith, he did not give up, and he's like, huh, I gotta think here, because I'm in danger. So, what would have happened if he flew away? We didn't even talk about that one. What if he flew away? So we're say, let's say that where he is at, they're having a severe drought, there's no water. Can't, and so what would have happened if he said, ugh, can't do this anymore, and he flew away? Jonathan. Um, if he flew away, and it was away, things would have died. Yeah. So how easy would it have been for the crow? He has wings. He could have flew, flown away thinking, I'm going to find water somewhere else. But what if there wasn't water anybody else, anywhere else? So he thought, and then he acted. This is a really good lesson, friends. Any other thoughts on the moral of the story? M. Very good. Those are good. Don't wait for others to help. Very good. Those are all excellent morals of the story. Very, very good. Any other thoughts? All right. So, why are we doing these? <laughs> You're all kind of like, eh, why are we doing this? Good. It's very, very, very important. Why? It's one thing to just pick up the story. It's easy. It's short. Get through it like that. Mrs. Reed told me to read The Crow in the Picture. Piece of cake. But if you just read it and just not really pay attention to the words and the meaning, what do you lose, Owen? What do you think the purpose of this is? comprehension. You are all at the age right now where are your brains, you are now good readers. But is reading the crow in the picture enough to really comprehend what's going on? No. no. You have to start delving into literature and really try to understand what is being told. 
when a person writes something, especially fables, there's a meaning behind it. Well, quite honestly, all literature has meaning. Otherwise, why would you write it? Authors take the time, they have an idea, they write it down, and they share it with their readers. Fables always have a moral. And if you quickly read through the crow in the pitcher or the ant and the dove or any of these other fables we're going to be reading, you miss the point. Why did this happen? What happened when this happened? There's sequencing, there's cause and effect, and all of that helps you to understand what we're reading. So that is why I am doing more of this as well, because it's really important. Because when you get into fourth grade, you are going to have more comprehension where you are going to have to read things and you're going to have to really understand it. And then by the time you get to high school and college, that's going to be a major important part of your academics. So this is really important. You might think it's boring. You might think, why are we doing this? This is so silly. Who cares about a crow in a pitcher, for heaven's sakes? It's more about what you are learning, not just the topic, but what is involved in the words. The words have meaning. I want for you to look at a story and understand what the meaning is. Okay, so that is why we're doing this. All right, so we are going to put that away. I would keep it. It doesn't hurt to keep it. It's up to you. So we're going to do more of that. We have another one. The one next week is really fun. It's a very old story. And I think, I bet you once I start reading it, you will, it'll trigger some memories because it's pretty, it's pretty famous. All right, now what I would like you to do is to get up Charlotte's Web and your journal. Your reading journal. We haven't gotten that out of it. All right, at this point, we are going to do our journal that we did. Um, so for those of, those of you who did not read with us, with me this morning, I want you to get your journal out and read, turn to the point of view, blue page, point of view. What is the point of view? Well, actually, I will just talk about Okay, so turn to point of view, friends, in your journal. Who can tell me what point of view means? Blue page. When we are reading a book, what does point of view mean? Who remembers? Luke. Yes. What does that mean, first person and third person? What is that? So what does that mean, though? Beautiful. So Luke said, first person is a pers a character in the story that is telling the story. Who? What book did we read that had that first person point of view? James. Henry Huggins. No. Grayson. Yes. Yes. Who remembers the name of the per character who is telling the story? M. Yes. Telling the story about Sarah who came to visit. So, or came to stay. Third person is when who is telling the story that, uh, yes, Luke. Right. Yes. So remember, third person is the narrator. Now, did Henry Huggins have first person or third person? First or third? Jack. Third? Yes. Now, with Charlotte's Web, who is telling the story? Is it first person or is it third person? Christian. Yes, the narrator is telling the story. Now we are talking about, with Martin Luther King Jr., there are, were a lot of what in the book. 
because it was about a true story, factual events. So what, Grant, what was, it, what was it a lot of in that book? Dates. Dates. Now, if you skim Charlotte's Web, what do you see a lot of that is occurring within this book? You see a lot of quotation marks. Why? Why do we see a lot of quotation marks in the story? More so than I think any other book that we've read so far. Um, Helen. Yes, so there means there's a lot of dialogue in this book, a lot of conversation. So, with that said, it is definitely a third person book. What I want you to do, I know that we just started, but I want you to write the date, which is January 21st, the title, which is Charlotte's Web. And then we have already discerned that we are talking about a third person point of view. I would like for you to, set, to pick out a sentence frame at the bottom and write a sentence about Charlotte's Web. So when I say sentence frame, Grant, I'm talking, if you look on the blue, here, since this is the first. You just all learn and smoothly. If you pick one of the sentence frames, No, on the, page, the blue page point of view, you have the sentence frames. All right, so at this time, I'm going to stop the recording because we're just going to start reading now. So um, you may read three to four, page, four to three to five pages of Charlotte's Web and write in your journal. <laughs>